The very first commercially available cell phone ever made was built by Motorola back in 1983 and was called the Motorola Dynatec 8000. It sold for $4,000. Fast forward 40 years and now we have the Motorola Razor Plus, which sells for only $1,000. And it's what we'll be durability testing today. It does a few more things than the original Dynatec including, but not limited to, folding in half. Let's get started. Whether you call it the Razer Plus or Razer 40 Ultra, this flexible phone comes with a massive list of caveats for usage, like don't remove any screen protectors, clean out dirt before closing the phone, and keep dust away. Basically, it seems like Motorola would prefer users of the Razer to tote the phone around on a velvet palanquin to prolong its fragile existence. We'll know how many of these warnings we actually need to follow by the end of my testing. At first glance, the Razer Plus looks and acts indistinguishably from the Samsung Flip 4. As it nears its fully open, unfolded stage, it springs to its 180 degree position with the two exterior glass halves of the phone touching in the center which will hopefully give it an advantage during the bin test. If you remember, the Pixel Fold's halves did not physically meet in the center, and we all know how that turned out. The internal crease of the phone gets bowed into a teardrop shape inside of the hinge, so the screen does not get pinched too drastically, and still satisfyingly snaps shut with no gaps between the halves. The biggest change, I think, with this newest foldable from Motorola comes with a large square 1 to 1, 3.6 inch triple hole punch display on the outside. This display allows for near full functionality of the phone without ever needing to flip it open. Personally, I think that people who are less addicted to technology are genuinely happier than people who are staring at their screens all day. And having a smaller screen would help the feeble human brain better withstand the corporate algorithms attempting to liquefy our gray matter. I like having the addiction reducing access on the front while still being able to flip it open to a full size phone when it comes time to get work done. Speaking of flipping it open, let's see what that inner screen is made from. We know that plastic scratches at a level 2 or 3, and honestly we don't even need to talk about the other numbers, since the Razer Phone Plus scratches at a level 2 with deeper grooves at a level 3. And yes, there does appear to be an included plastic screen protector, with a cutout around the 32 megapixel front facing camera, but remember, this is the very screen protector that Motorola says is non-removable. So it's not just protecting the screen, it is the screen. Like we expect with all folding phones, the inner screen is super soft and susceptible to damage. There is also a very thin grillless earpiece slit up at the top. Flipping the phone shut and making our way to the exterior screen, which does look rather amazing, we can work our way further up the numbers on most scale of hardness to find that the outer screen scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7, right where we'd expect Gorilla Glass Victus to land. The exterior frame of the phone is made from 7000 series aluminum including each individual volume button and the power button that doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Instant thumbs up for me. The top of the Razer Plus is pretty bare. And on the left side of the phone we have our removable SIM card tray, but no expandable storage. The bottom has our loudspeaker, microphone hole, and 30 watt USB-C port. The back panel is made up of a very, very textured piece of scratch-resistant Gorilla Glass Victus. So far I'm a pretty huge fan of the external aesthetics. However, as we learned back on Sesame Street, sticks and stones are how we really break bones. Dust getting inside the folding mechanism is a legitimate concern, and something we should worry about, especially with the laundry list of warnings that Motorola gave us when we turned on the phone. The Razer Plus does have an IP rating of 5.2, which means that we do have some protection against dust but almost no protection against water. But even with this hefty dosage of dirt so far, there are no crazy grinding or catching noises to be heard. If we remember back to the original folding Razer smartphone released a few years ago, it had one of the simplest hinges of all time, so I imagine there aren't really a whole lot of gears inside to catch that dirt, and we'll have to see just how much really entered when it comes time to take the phone apart. The fingerprint scanner, even with all its scratches, is able to set my thumbprint. And if we add a whole lot more scratches, it's still able to read and unlock the phone every single time, even with the extra damage. 
Speaking of damage, the two large rear camera lenses, a 12 megapixel normal camera and 13 megapixel wide angle, both of which are protected by glass and aren't damaged by my razor blade. Busting out our flame on this square 144 Hz exterior display, which creatively extends its pixels past the camera units, we're able to see that it lasts about 20 seconds under the heat from my lighter, before the AMOLED panel burns white and does not recover. Flipping the phone open to reveal the larger 6.9 inch 165Hz LTPO flexible display, we see that it only lasts about 6 seconds before going black and not recovering. The plastic top layer is visibly deformed, and you know, if that's the only deformation that happens during this durability test, I'll consider it a success. But judging by the fact that the previous Razer phone did not pass my bin test, I'm exceptionally nervous to see how this Razer Plus performs. Binning the phone from the front by slamming it shut does not seem to cause any damage, even with its dust slathered exteriors. But when bending from the back to test the structural integrity of the hinge, something really strange happens. Turns out the flexible screen is actually fine, but the non-flexing exterior screen is the thing that shatters into oblivion, which is extremely confusing. Why would this happen? Not only is it shattered, but it's also caved in. There is a hollow void behind the screen that succumbed to the pressure of my thumb and shattered inward, creating a thumb-sized concave crater. Never have we ever been able to break a screen with a single finger. Judging by the size of the void, I don't think it had as much to do with the force of me bending the phone, but more just with nothing being back there to support the glass. Glass is glass, and without proper support, it's just asking to become a thousand dollar single use fidget popper. Even with the exterior screen shattered, the razor still bends backwards quite a ways, but the flexible screen locks out and does not crack or break on its own. The razor plus is still functional, just a little damaged, aren't we all? It'll be really interesting to see how big that cavern is during the teardown, so hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss it. It's free, unlike my hobbies. Do you think we should consider the razor plus a fail and put it on the shelf of shame? Or, since it has a secondary backup screen inside, should we let it pass? It's a tough call. Let me know down in the comments. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.